I think we start instantly. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the talk today. Yes, of course, the most important man is coming as well. Talk of the day, of, or, or my talk of the day, is about Leap is Dead. And I want to do this together with Jeezy. I hope Jeezy. I spelled Jeezy. this name right. <laughs> Let's not make it, make it a lesson of Czech pronunciation. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning just the whole morning already, but I think I failed somehow. Uh, is doing the second part, Long Live Leap. So let's jump into it about myself. I'm a community member, uh, like many of you here as well. I'm not employed by Zusa. I maintain uh, a couple of hundred packages, mostly out of the area of enterprise resource planning, medical software, and something like that. So I have some interest uh, to get a really stable basis to run this application on it. Let's take a look, first of all, what are we currently shipping as, as OpenSUSE? So first of all, we have Tumbleweed, which is our, uh, I would say, call it a flagship because it's a rolling release, every development goes into this first, and um, due to its, its setup with ButterFS and something like that, it's mainly unbreakable. Um, it's very popular as a uh, desktop system, and I think we're shipping more than 10 desktops by default. You can just install them without having additional packages to download. And then we have, of course, Leap, our traditional long-term support release, which inherits the packages in between from uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise. Quite popular as server and desktop. MicroOS is one of the new kits on the block. It's a minimalistic transactional system that keeps itself up to date. And currently, or since latest, we have an additional version coming from Leap, micro as Leap. And the last one, Cubic, um, built on micro OS as well, in coming already with Kubernetes for large container deployments, but I just learned from the maintainer that this is being decommissioned as separate... Uh okay. <laughs> So take a little look at the numbers. Um, this is the low estimate of the numbers. I, I've picked this from metrics.opensuse.org. Uh, yeah, it's a snapshot from end of March. In total, we have about 500,000 uh, unique installations accessing these update servers, so it doesn't uh, contain information or uh, updates that are from separate repositories or uh, uh, um, enterprises which keep their own repository backlog. So 15.3 is currently the most used um, distribution, instantly followed by Tumbleweed, which has around 145,000 installations. So Roughly, Leap 15.3 has about 50% more installations than Tumbleweed. And the rest, which is uh, some, don't know, 50K, is split between these unmaintained releases. And there is even one machine uh, running ZUSA 10.2 or OpenZUSA 10.2 which was released in December 2006, which is some 16 years old. We need to get this guy moved to probably tumbleweed. Anything else will probably not work. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing. I mean, I have old hardware from 2007 with one gigabyte of RAM and a 32-bit processor. Tumbleweed is the only thing that runs on it. So where are we coming? What is our development model? Um, since the Leap model, we are sharing the core with the SUSE Linux Enterprise. So we are taking basically the same source code, but building it a little bit different. And our application stack is mostly coming from Tumbleweed. 
So the same ingredients, but a slightly different recipe is a slightly different dish to eat. Then there was the idea in 2019, hmm, how about driving these code streams together? So SUSE would donate the SLE binaries to the OpenSUSE community, and that gives us a couple of advantages. For example, OpenSUSE would receive SLE quality. We have one less code stream to package, we have one less code stream to build, and uh, one less to test. Sleek quality for leap users, sounds like a win-win situation, and I was very in favor of that. Yeah, unfortunately, the devil is in the detail. For the user, it doesn't change very much. So in leap 15.2, uh, in a standard installation, he had four repositories. For 15.3, there were a couple of new repositories coming up, so most of the OpenSUSE packages went into the back ports, and then we had, of course, the SLEE update repository. But for the packager, we have now a bunch of additional repositories from to where we have to submit our uh, updates. So, up to now, it was quite easy. Before that, we said, okay, I have an update for OpenSUSE core package. I just submit it as a maintenance release uh, or a maintenance request to the update repository. Uh, and now we have to find out, huh, where is the package coming from? Is it an OpenSUSE package or is it a SLE package? And if it is a SLE package, to which of the um, repositories that we've seen before do we have to submit it? Well, of course, we can use uh, OSC for that, but as well, we can use uh, the web front end, fire up the OpenSUSE Leap 15.4 repository, and go to the inherited packages. So here we can search for the package that we're looking for, and we see here from which package um, from which SLE version it's coming from. So that can be anything between 15.0 and up to service pack 4. So, as a community member, you do not have access to any of the SUSE internal tools. That means where SUSE is working with Jira and uh, IBS internally, you don't see anything. So. What you do is uh, SAP, submit and pray, because if anything work breaks in between or if there is a missing uh, dependency, you do not see it instantly. You really need to wait until um, you get some information. That's not really, um, how to say, not really satisfying. Yeah, but we can maintain our bugs in Bacilla. Here we had the same issue. We had a couple of bugs that were visital, visit, visible. Whoop, good morning, Axel. That were visible to everybody. <laughs> um, but there is also bugzilla.zusa.com, which is due to NDA issues with paying customers and something like that, not visible for the community. At least here we have an improvement in between because we can submit. Um, bugs against public SUSE enterprise 15.4 uh, service pack 4 desktop and something like that. Then we were aware that SUSE follows a so-called TikTok development model. What does that mean? The first one is the tick. That no, the, the first one in this case is listed here is the talk. So one service pack is more keeping or getting cosmetic updates. That means it contains a lot of bug fixes, probably those that have summarized over the last service pack already. The next service pack is then the one oops, that is coming with functional updates. As a consequence from this, the first release that we had in this model, Leap 15.3, 
was heavily outdated in all applications that we were shipping. The KDE desktop was way too old, GNOME, and basically everything. Leap 15.4 has now some updates, but it's far away from being up to date. So happily, we got a new Python, uh, we got a new Qt stack, we got a new KDE stack. Uh, most of the, the desktops are up to date, but many other applications are not. Why is that the case? SUSE doesn't care about the desktop. And I mean, I don't blame them for that because uh, this is not, nothing where, where customers pay for. Right? Customers pay for servers and mainly, or maybe also for some applications where they want support. So their focus is on the server and not on the desktop. But we, as a community, we want to have up-to-date software. And here we are affected, for example, from the issue that the Python stack that uh, is shipped by default with 15.4 is Python 3.6. End of life cycle, December 2021. This half a year ago. Right. So, and I doubt that we get any security updates into that. Susan needs that still for enterprise customers. But we cannot update many packages anymore because this 3.6 ship has sailed a long time ago. And if we now get new applications, they want Python 3.8 or 3.10 or something like that. And the unpleasant situation here is that we know that we're shipping software which is vulnerable, but we cannot update it anymore because we would need a, a newer Python stack. For those who can deal with it, 15.4 um, ships as well, Python 3.9 and 3.10, uh, and we can change this with update alternatives, but this is not something that an average user could do. Right. And that also means some packages we cannot build as it is building against the default compiler, which is Python 3.6. Want some more? Ruby stack, for example. The Ruby 2.5, which is shipped by default, is end of life cycle in March. It doesn't support Rails 7 nor Vagrant, and we do not really have an alternative here like we have it in the Python world. So, ooh, oh yeah, sorry, hit the wrong key. Leap 15.5 will be talk again. That means we don't expect any updates to the desktops, to the Python stack, or to anything else. And to be very honest, at that point I think, in time I think, we can bury leap and it's dead. So clearly if we as a community want to ship a long-term support distribution that is, contains up-to-date software and is stable, we clearly need a new development model. So, thanks to Patrick yesterday who explained about the defibrillator, I think we need to get the heartbeat starting again and Leap needs a defi. We need either a tick-tick-tick model, so coming back to the model that we had before, that we ship more of the applications from Tumbleweed or maybe um, with, a, with a separate application layer on top of it where we add these packages or we need something completely different. And with this, I hand over to Gizzi. Thank you, Axel. Thank you, Axel. So let's have a look uh, what uh, we as uh, SUSE are currently discussing and planning uh, for, the, for the future. Uh, Axel mentioned uh, several issues uh, with uh, the Leap development, and uh, I fully recognize that uh, his issues are valid. Uh, since uh, closing the Leap gap, uh, if I exaggerate a bit, uh, OpenSUSE is uh, using the same packages uh, for SLS with just some edit branding. So it would be surprising if uh, the SUSE distribution didn't uh, suffer the very same issues. And uh, in fact, uh, this fight is about uh, two options. Either keep things stable, as stable as they, as they can be, 
over uh, as long life cycle as possible or uh, really use the bleeding edge. Uh, Axel mentioned as an example the Ruby version. If I asked this audience, uh, the majority would probably prefer to use uh, the most recent version. Uh, but uh, if you are running uh, any workload, uh, a server one, which you don't want to update uh, regu regularly, you, you just want it to be running, and uh, update of uh, the Ruby stack uh, could be disruptive and uh, break uh, your workload. So I'm pretty sure that you would not agree on a single version to, to use uh, over a long time. So we obviously need uh, to change something. If you look at uh, the distribution it, uh, and how uh, the Linux system is installed, it's not that much different uh, from uh, the old uh, Unix uh, from the 60s, 70s. You have uh, one file system, all the libraries, all uh, the software at its place, and uh, obviously, uh, we did uh, quite some work in packaging so that we can uh, have uh, multiple versions of Python installed uh, in parallel, uh, but still you have uh, just one environment uh, in which uh, all your applications are running, and uh, this also means that in many, in many cases all your applications uh, have no other option than uh, sharing uh, the same version of uh, the runtime, whatever it uh, in that specific case means. Uh, what we would like uh, as SUSE to do for our own ne next generation uh, enterprise operating system uh, is uh, to move uh, more towards the ap application centric view. The application is what you as a user want to run and you don't really care that much uh, about uh, the operating system or the kernel below as long as it supports your hardware. And uh, for that, uh, we are uh, looking for ways uh, to really de de decouple the core operating system and the application so that each of them can use, uh, for example, be the different version of Ruby, which is just as an example. So what to do, how to do it? Uh, yesterday, Alex uh, was having, Alex Herzig was having a talk about uh, BCI, which means uh, yes, we can uh, start uh, the, the providing uh, applications, uh, be it a web server, Adam talked about DNS server, anything, as uh, not as uh, really RPMs, but as uh, containers, which would possibly reuse uh, the runtimes we provide. And uh, they would be much less dependent on what, what is uh, in the base system. It would mean, first, uh, we could use a different uh, version of uh, software than the base system, but at the same time also, if you have uh, different workloads running on the server, uh, they will uh, be able to use uh, different, uh, different uh, versions of uh, any packages without uh, the packager having uh, to take care that uh, they can be installed in parallel. And... Uh, <coughs> and uh, they would not interfere uh, with, with each other. Uh, of course, uh, Axel talked about it from the user's perspective. Uh, this can easily, this, this must work uh, also for uh, desktop, uh, desktop, uh, desktop, desktops, and uh, this uh, should be something that the users uh, ideally should not even recognize that there is any difference. They want to run uh, their web browser, they will run their web browser, and uh, if it is running in, in a container, they should not uh, notice uh, any, anything. It should behave exactly like the way it did it uh, before. It may sound like uh, a bit hard, uh, but on the other hand, uh, Axel also mentioned the micro OS uh, desktop and uh, it is getting the traction, so obviously it, it is possible. Uh, so what prevents us uh, from really packaging uh, the software in uh, this way and uh, ship it uh, to users and then, of, then the community 
uh, for uh, what, if it's leap or uh, if the name is completely different, uh, can either keep using uh, <coughs> using uh, these provided containers or, or container images, or uh, it is also possible just to update single part of uh, the, of uh, the system which uh, you care more about, and uh, you would not uh, need to bother about uh, possibly breaking something else because it will use a completely different version of uh, all the runtimes, all the libraries. So this is something that, uh, this is direction uh, which uh, we are uh, heading for uh, the coming future. Uh, you may want to ask uh, where we develop where we will develop uh, actually the new uh, version of our offering. Uh, SLEE 15 uh, and uh, in fact all the previous versions uh, were developed uh, behind uh, the SUSE, inside the SUSE firewall. Uh, you could not uh, submit uh, directly to the internal build service and uh, in fact you had no way to see what's going on, what we are doing. Uh, until we decided uh, to uh, publish it, uh, publish it to you, and uh, also means that you could not see the impact on uh, any addition pa additional part of uh, Leap which are not uh, part of uh, Slash. This is something that uh, we want to change, and uh, we want uh, to develop uh, from the beginning uh, in the ex we call it external build service, but build OpenSUSE.org. Uh, this means. Uh, Almost everything uh, should uh, be publicly visible for any of you. Uh, I said almost. Uh, unfortunately, there will always need to be some exception, exceptions. Uh, think about uh, stuff which we develop under NDA, or uh, when we get uh, when we are fixing bugs which are still under embargo, and we simply cannot release uh, this information to public. Uh, this will unfortunately not change, but uh, the big development itself uh, is expected uh, to happen uh, in uh, public as much as possible. Do you want to see anything? Uh, yes, as I said, we already started bootstrapping something in uh, built open uh, We have very, very early prototype uh, which uh, consists of a subset of uh, tumbleweed and uh, is building uh, images uh, for uh, several of the hypervisors. Uh, you can uh, <coughs> find uh, s several projects in uh, the build service. Uh, the probably most relevant is Devil Colon Leo. Uh, yes, the naming is uh, possibly confusing. Uh, even the Alp is not a final name. Uh, it's uh, just uh, let's say code name of uh, the development effort. Uh, so the Develio contains a snapshot of a subset of uh, OpenSUSE factory, which uh, acts as base. Uh, we have also Devel colon Alp, uh, which is used as a testbed for Git-based workflows. And uh, I guess uh, in the coming months uh, there will be more projects uh, in build service to make it even more confusing. Uh, we we plan to have something that is somehow uh, ready to be presented uh, this autumn, and uh, first solution based on the new code streams uh, we would like uh, to have ready autumn next year, uh, which uh, is which can give you a timeline uh, when you can actually expect uh, uh, to build uh, something uh, leap, next leap. Uh, but as a disclaimer, uh, these are current ideas about the dates and uh, the dates uh, can uh, change in the coming uh, weeks or months. Uh, if you want uh, to get involved, uh, uh, we or, or Stefan Bellert, who is unfortunately not here today, uh, in, uh, informed uh, the, the OpenSUSE board and uh, the OpenSUSE community uh, in uh, 
April, and uh, there, I think you all can read the feedback on uh, in the mailing list. Uh, one thing that uh, we would like to say is that we are not looking into developing next uh, version of uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise. We are really looking at it as a new code stream with uh, new philosophy of the way uh, we uh, distribute uh, the applications. Uh, for uh, the efforts, uh, we are currently bootstrapping s some kind of working groups uh, which uh, tackle specific areas of uh, the new distribution. Uh, you can see a link uh, in uh, this slide uh, where you can see the list of the working groups. Some of them already have uh, more details about themselves. Uh, if you think that anything is interesting for you, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, we will be happy to uh, hear what you think about it. Uh, if you want to help because it matters for you, we will be happy to accept your help. After all, we are doing all the development in uh, public, and in fact, everything develop all development uh, still happens in uh, OpenSUSE factory. So this was the last slide from me. I don't know if uh, there are any questions. There's one back. Maybe sh shout at me and we will repeat it. Ah, there is another mic. I mean, can we do this in the next session? Uh, I mean, we can. I, we can actually ask. We can actually as well. That's a, that might be a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The next. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>